Welcome to Tech Tools for Success, preparing for next generation assessments. If you have a Chromebook, desktop computer, or other electronic device, please log in and open the internet at this time. You will benefit more from this video if you can work along with what I am explaining. You may also pause or rewind this video at any time. Today's tutorial will review digital resources available to you on the 6th grade social studies performance based assessment. This is a digital assessment and may be different from assessments that you are used to taking. It does have tools that will help you better perform on the assessment. That is the purpose of this tutorial. Today we are learning about the tools available to us on the new Ohio State tests. I strongly urge you to play with the resources and tools available to you on the test today. You do not want to waste time on the test learning how to use these features. That is what today's tutorial is for. Log on to nextgen.nuwaka.org. Again, that web address is nextgen. NWOCA dot ORG. That web address you typed in should take you to a page that looks like this. What I need you to do next is click on Ohio Online Field Test Portal 4 through 12. Today we will sign in as a guest so we see our session ID and all information is guessed. So we will simply click on sign in. For this page, it's just asking us to confirm our first name and last name and our SSID. For today's purposes, we're going to be guessed. The only thing we need to do is select a grade. Since we are reviewing the sixth grade social studies test, I'm going to choose grade six. And then I will click yes. On this page, you'll see all of the practice assessments that you can take. You may or may not be taking all of these this year. Your teacher will explain which test you will take. For sixth grade, you will be taking both the performance-based assessment, which is the PBA, and the end-of-year assessment, which is the EOI. Let's click on the PBA. we begin to see some of the settings and resources that will be available to us on this page. Let's turn masking on. We will see how to use this later in the video. Let's look at the different color choices available to us. Again, on the test, choose a color choice that you are familiar with and comfortable with. The default will be black on white. That is what you see right now. Black font and a white background. I will use that for the purpose of this tutorial. We see the others that are available. Light yellow, light blue, light magenta, reverse contrast, white on navy. So again, you want to experiment with these today, not the day of the test. Another option is print size. We see there are four different levels of print size available to you. I'm going to go with the one that is provided. As you increase to level four, it zooms in on the page for you. But for today's tutorial, I'm just going to stay right there. So I will click select. This page reviews our settings. It's important if you see this on the test, to review the settings that you have chosen to make sure you are using all the tools that you are comfortable with. So I will review over my settings and see that these are the settings that I chose. And click yes, start my test. This page is the test instructions and help page. These are the resources we will be examining in this tutorial. I would encourage you to pause the video at this point and read through the different tools you have available to you. 
Now that you have read through those tools, click Begin Test Now. So I need to scroll down to do that. Now, let's review the test tools that will be available to you on your sixth grade social studies performance-based assessment. And the first tool I want to show you is located in the top right corner. It's this question mark. If you click on that, this takes you back to the page with descriptions of all the tools. It includes this diagram of what you will see on your test page. If you continue to scroll down, it has what the tool is with its description to the right. You just read through those, so I'm not going to read through those, but you will learn about all of these throughout the video. So to X out of this, I simply click the X in the top right corner of the box. Now, let's review the questions drop down. That is located up here in this blue toolbar as well. This feature allows you to jump from one question to any other question on the test. To do that, I simply click the drop down arrow here. It's also going to allow me to see if I have marked any questions for review. I will demonstrate how to mark a question for review later in the video. I encourage you though to answer the question if you understand it before skipping to other questions. But I want to demonstrate this drop down box. So if I click on question four, it will take me all the way to question four. Notice right here we have the, the number of the question, question four there. Now I'm just simply going to click back to question one to start the test from the beginning. Before you submit your test once you are finished, I would encourage you again to click this drop down to make sure you have not marked any of these questions for review. That way you know you have answered each question to the best of your ability. Now we'll review the navigation tools. They are in the top left corner under the question drop down. So that is these are the navigation tools. First we will examine the back and the next buttons. This allows you to go to the next question. So after I've answered number one, I can click save here and then I will go to my next question. And I go from one to two. If I continue to hit next, I go to three and four. This allows you to navigate through the test at your own speed. I can also rewind and go back to previous questions. The next button we want to look at on our navigation tools is the save button. Once you are comfortable with an answer, click the save button. What that will do is it will save the answers you have to that point. Next is the pause button. Click the pause button. Let's see what happens. Once I have clicked the pause button, notice that this attention box appears. If you pause for longer than 20 minutes, you will not be able to go back and make changes to this test. If you make no changes for 20 minutes to your test, it will automatically pause the test for you and save the answers you've had up until that point. So that's important to remember. Now, for today, I don't want to pause the test, so I will click No. The final icon up here is the End Test button. This button will submit the test for you. Do not click this button until you are finished with the test. Be sure to click this button once you are finished with the test. I would review all of your answers. Again, click on that questions drop down to make sure that you have not missed any questions that you have marked for review. And then simply hit the end test button. Let's stay along the top and now look at the test tools that are available to us. First, we'll look at masking. 
Masking allows you to cover part or parts of the question. This would be similar to using your hand, a pencil, or a piece of paper on a traditional paper and pencil test. To activate this tool, click on Masking. Then, click an area that you want to mask and drag your mouse over that area you wish to mask. So, after I've read through this question carefully, there's parts of it I may want to cover up. Let's say I want to focus on country X, and I want to just block out country Y. We notice the masking icon is highlighted, so what I will do is I will click here and simply hold my mouse down and drag over country Y here to block out that information. So the tool is going to stay active as long as I have the icon highlighted. So anywhere I click on here will activate this tool. So this may start to bother you after a while. So if I do not want it activated any longer, I simply click on the icon, the highlight goes away, and I can click the X's on these boxes to remove them. Next, we'll focus on the notes. So oh, up here next to masking is notes. Many of you may write notes or information in the margins or elsewhere on a traditional paper and pencil test. This allows you to do this digitally. Let's check this out. So I'm going to click on notes. Notice a notepad will appear. I can move this notepad anywhere I like on the test simply by clicking, dragging, and dropping. You may want to practice your clicking, dragging, and dropping if you are not comfortable doing it at this time. You can also type ideas that you have in this box. So I'm simply going to type some ideas that I have. If I wish to keep the note, I can just hit save and close and it disappears. If I want to refer back to those notes I took, all I need to do is click on notes and see ideas are still there. I'm just going to cancel out of this for right now. Another option available to you is line reader. Line reader is located next to the notes icon. And this would be similar to using your hand, a pencil, or a piece of paper on a traditional paper and pencil test to help you follow along where you're reading. Once I click this icon, it highlights in blue there a line of text. That way, if I have trouble reading, if I lose my place a lot, I would encourage you to use Line Reader. So, to move the Line Reader, I use the arrows at the bottom right corner of my Chromebook. And you can see the Line Reader goes down, and I can have it go back up again. Again, to deactivate this, simply click the line reader icon, and it disappears. The last tools on the tools menu are the zoom out and zoom in icons. Let's click on zoom in. Notice how the screen is getting bigger every time I hit zoom in. Now, if you are on a Chromebook and you would like to see what's over in this area and scroll over, you can use these bars over here to scroll up and down but also if you're on a Chromebook you can take two fingers and swipe on the trackpad this will allow you to scroll up and down or side to side so if you want to practice that take two fingers and gently swipe across the trackpad as you would on a smartphone or on an iPad or other tablet you can see that you can quickly and easily swipe side to side or up and down now, if I want to go back to my regular view, I'll just keep hitting zoom out until I get to the view that I like. Next, we will review options that are available to us in the context menu. The context menu is right here. It looks like the settings icon for Google. And it's usually located on a line where the question number is. So let's click on that context menu. We see right now 
two options are available to us. Later, I will have it so that more options are available to us. But we're going to start with these two options. What I want to show you first is the tutorial. So click on Tutorial. This provides you with a video tutorial from the test on how to answer the style of question that is being asked. It's not a hint to what the answer is, but is a hint on how to properly answer the question. So if you look at this, in the red box it gives you written instructions, and on the screen behind it demonstrates what you need to do. I'd encourage you to watch the video tutorials on your own or as a class today so that you are familiar with the ways to answer when you take the actual test. So for this tutorial that I'm making right now, I'm not going to watch this entire tutorial here that they've created. But notice they're just dragging and dropping the different animals into different boxes. So I'm going to X out of this tutorial to make it go away. The next available icon in the context menu is Mark for Review. Now, let's click on that. Notice over here, this number one, the page is folded down. Also, up here in the question drop down, it's marked question one for me so that I know later I need to go back and answer that question. I would encourage you to answer the question if you understand it before skipping to other questions. This is going to be similar to circling a question on a paper or pencil test that you may have. So now that the question is marked for review, I now know to go back to that question. Now, just some basics with the test. We're going to walk through this test together so that we can see how to answer different types of questions. With any test, it's always important to read any instructions that are on the page or on the screen that you see in front of you. So we'll start by reading. This chart shows characteristics of two neighboring countries. They've labeled these countries country X and country Y. They were very creative with how they named these, but hopefully that won't distract you. So then I would read through the country X descriptions or characteristics, and maybe as you read through there, try to imagine what country X looks like or would be like. So then I would read through country Y's characteristics. Again, imagining what that country looks like. These are clues that are going to help you answer this question. Another difference between a traditional test that you take and the performance-based assessment test that you take is that most of these questions will have a part A and a part B. It is very important that you answer all parts of the question. So let's concentrate on part A. In order to help me focus, I'm going to use one of the tools. I'm going to use the masking. Now to activate masking, I click on the masking icon, I come over here, I click, there's some lag time here, and I'm just going to mask this out. So I'm going to move the economic activities that would fit best in each country into the blank boxes under each country. So this is part A. I'm going to look for part A over here, and I know there are four boxes here. Now, what I need to do is look at country X. They have many cities, high population, shipping ports, shortage of farmland, and no mineral resources. I'll look at the industries available. Well, manufacturing. I know that there's some characteristics of manufacturing. I know that usually happens in a city. So, I, I think that might help me with country X there. Mining. Well, I don't know. Let's look at country Y as well so we can compare the two. Few cities, low population, landlocked, plenty of rich farmland, rich in mineral resources. Huh. So now I have a good idea of what each country is like. Manufacturing. 
I know that is producing things in a factory. I know a lot of times factories are located in cities. So I'm going to move this. Now to move this, I click on it and I just drag it, holding it down along my trackpad. Then I release it to set it there. Agriculture. Well, I know one of the countries had lots of farmland. Oh, that's country Y. So again, I'm going to click, holding my finger on my trackpad and drag this up to country Y and releasing. Mining. I remember one of the countries was rich in mineral resources. So that would be country Y. So again, I click, drag it, and drop it. So to, I click on my trackpad and run my finger along the trackpad and drop it in country Y. Now I'm going to check to make sure that shipping occurs in country X. And they have shipping ports. So again, click and just slide my finger over and release to drop it. Now I know I need to answer part B, so I'm going to click off of masking. Move what each country would export into the blank boxes. Well, I know country X manufactures. I know that has to do with factories. So I would click, drag, and drop. And then I know country Y, agricultural goods are raw materials, so are mineral goods. So I will click, drag, and drop. Now, let's say I wasn't totally sure about that. I could mark this for review. But now that I've gone through it, I know I have this answer right. So I'll click unmark for review. Another thing that I'll do is save my answer to this point. Let's click on the next question. Again, we see question two. We have two sources of information. It's important for us to read all of the information in order to help us answer the question. So I'll see the two maps of China are shown. China has six distinct regions. I'll quickly study over this map here as well as the coal and oil map of China. Now I'll scroll down. On the Chromebook trackpad, you can take two fingers and swipe downwards. That will help you scroll down. Or you can always use this bar over here to help yourself scroll down. We'll continue to read. Move the region into the chart under the heading that correctly describes each region's characteristics. You do not need to use all of the regions. It's important on these tests that you try to scroll all the way down to the bottom just to make sure you've answered all parts of the question. Well, again, I need to look at data or information from these two maps in order to answer these questions. I'm not going to go over the answer, with the answer to this question with you. To, because I have a feeling your social studies teacher wants you to use this for practice. So again, I'm just doing this blindly. This requires me to drag and drop. So I can drag an answer here and put it there. I don't know if that's correct or not. So what I would do is I am going to flag this question or mark this question for review so I know I have to go back. I don't understand this question. I want to go on to a question that I do understand. So let's look at question number three. To get there, you guessed it, you click the next button, or I could simply come up here and drop down to number three. Number three here shows two maps again. And again, not all the information is visible on this screen. So I'm going to have to scroll down. It's very important that you always scroll down or scroll to the side to make sure there is not more information. So let's read the question. From the two maps above, identify which type of map would be more useful in determining the countries through which the Euphrates River flows. Explain the reasoning for your answer. Type your answer in the space provided. So you need to identify which type of map would be more useful and then explain the reasoning. So down here is where you would type your answer. 
Now, we're going to go over some of the icons available to you and some of the tools that you have when you write a response. If I want to bold a word, I can click this big B here, and that makes it bold. If I want to italicize it, I click the I. This underlined U, if you can believe it or not, is for underline. Now, let's say I want all of that formatting gone. I can go back one by one and do it, or I can use this text formatting, this remove formatting, and it will do it for me. There are some other features you can use here. Another thing you could do is use numbers. So I could have answer number one there. If I hit enter, now it's number two. Let's say you're not a fan of numbering as bullets. You just want to use regular bullets. You can click bullets, and it will change your answer into bullets. Put your formatting into bullets. Over here, we have indenting. If I want to increase my indent, I click it to the right. If I want to go back, I go to the left. Again, notice how I typed your. I know when you text your friends, you may use abbreviations or shorthand. Do not do that on this test. This test is a formal test, and you're going to be expected to answer formally. So if I want to cut that, I'll click the cut and get rid of it. Now I'm going to put a different word there. Type your answer. Then down here I'm going to write be sure to check your spelling. All right, so I showed you how to cut. If I want to copy this answer, I can click this button, and that will copy it. To paste, this little clipboard is your paste button. Now, let's say I don't want that. I want to undo it. I can click that, or maybe I did want it, so I would click that, but I do not want it there, so I would go back. Now, the writing portion also has spell, spell check. So if I select my entire text here, and I hit this ABC, it will spell check for me. Notice it did this only after I hit the spell check icon. Normally, when you're writing in Google Docs, as you make mistakes, oftentimes it will underline it in red. We need to go back now and make sure this is spelled correct. Well, I don't think your English teacher would be very happy if you wrote spelling as spelling. So all I need to do is click on this and see it gives me different options here. I wanted this spelling. Now that's much better. So I will click off of that. Now you may also want different characters, special characters. If you click on that, you can have numbers, you have different letters here, you can use fractions, arrows, any kind of symbol that you will need is available to you. So to get out of there, I can X out here or cancel down here. Notice as I drag my mouse over different icon or different symbols here, it shows up in those boxes on the top right. So I'm going to cancel out of here. Let's, I don't really know what, if I answered this well, so again, I don't really understand this question. I want to go back to it later. So I'm going to mark this question for review as well. On the test, I would encourage you to answer the questions as you go if you know how to answer them and what the answer is. So let's look at question four. Again, this is an extended response, a written response. You will use the same tools that I reviewed in question three. Once you are finished, I would encourage you to go back through each question and make sure you are happy with your answer. And then, before you submit, click up here in the question drop-down to make sure you have no marked questions. I have two, so I would then go back and click on these answers. 
Before we are done, though, there are a few more tools I would like to show you. Another tool is the highlighter. So the highlighter will be located in your context menu. To get highlighter, I just click on the word and highlight it like that. Now you have two options to highlight this term. Those three icons that appeared on my screen will not appear on yours for the test. The first option to highlight this word and keep it highlighted is to click on the context menu and simply click highlight selection. Now this is highlighted. I can highlight as many words as I want. Another option to highlight this is to right click. On a Chromebook, you can take two fingers and tap, and that will be the same as right clicking. I'm going to right click now, so I can bring up all those different options that are available to me through context menu. I can highlight the selection. If I want to get rid of all this highlighting, I simply right click, click and hit reset highlighting. Now, once I go through and answer each question, I would then hit end test. There is another option that I would like to show you. You also have a strike through option, which would be useful on a multiple choice question. To access this option, we must exit out of the performance based assessment practice test. So, what I want you to do is Go back to this Next Generation Nuwaka tab. So click on that. If you closed out of that tab already, simply type in nextgen.nwoca.org. We will once again click on the online field test portal. And if I'm moving too quickly, remember, you can always pause this video. Again, we're going to sign in as a guest. We see that we have the right first and last name because I'm signing in as a guest. I'm going to select grade six once again. I will hit yes. Now, instead of clicking on the PBA, this time, I'm going to click on the EOI. EOI stands for End of Year Assessment. You will be taking this later in the school year. So let's click on this. Again, I'm going to have my print size the same. I will turn masking on just to make sure we have it available to us. I'm going to choose my color choice as black on white and hit select. Again, this is the te these are the test options I want, so I'm going to scroll down to the bottom and click Yes, Start My Test. Again, these are the test instructions. That is what this tutorial is covering. I'm going to scroll all the way to the bottom and click Begin Test Now. So this is a sample from the end of year test. It is a multiple choice question. I brought you here to show you the strike through feature. This way, if you see a multiple choice question on the performance based assessment, you understand how to utilize the strike through option. So, to do this, I am going to right click on an option I don't like. I, I've already read through the question, I'm starting to read through the possible answers. I don't like some of these, and I want to eliminate them. So, to do this, I'm going to use the strike through feature. Some of you on a paper or a pencil test may simply cross the answer out. To do this, I'm going to right click. Again, on the Chromebook, that's a two finger tap. Now we see different options appear for us. I want the strike through option. So I click strike through. So I didn't like, que I didn't like answer A, so I strike through it. I also don't like question D. Again, on the test, you read through these carefully. I'm just demonstrating how to do this. So I will cross out letter D or strike through letter D. 
Now, I knew those two weren't a possible answer, and if I want B, if I think that's the best answer, I would choose B. And then I would move on. That is the strike through option. Now, let's say I struck through all four of them. Well, obviously, one of those answers is correct. So, if I wanted to get rid of some of these strike throughs, I simply right click again, two finger tap on the Chromebook, and click undo strike through. And I can do the same thing here undo strike through. Now, I would encourage you to practice the tools we just reviewed in this video. Get familiar and comfortable with using these tools today so that they will help you on the day of the test. I'd like to wish all of you good luck on both the performance-based assessment, which you will take first, and the end-of-year assessment, which you will take closer to the end of the school year.